let's move with the protagonists of this evening, right? Uh, we're going to start with the first group is composed by Jonathan, Luis, and Gabriel, and their project is called SIM. Okay, come on. Hello, greetings, everyone. Buenas tardes a todos. Can you all hear me in the back? Yeah? Okay, nice. Today, we're going to talk about our project, which is called SIM, which stands for Sales and Inventory Management. It's a Windows application that helps you manage your sales and your inventory. Um, my name, as Jeffrey said, is Jonathan Rivera. I'm the team leader, and I'm the one focused on the back end of the application. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Gabriel Lopez. I work in the, in the database of the, app, of the application. I was the application tester, and as well, I, I work in the backend with my lead developer, Jonathan. So a little bit about myself. Um, in 2018, I used to work in Planet Fitness. I wanted to change careers, so I started looking around a little bit about technology. But I didn't do much with it till Kobe came. And I remember I was scrolling, you know, through Facebook and I saw the Hoverton ad and I decided, hey, why not? Let's try it out. And here, nine months later, I'm presenting to you guys my final project. Um, so hello, my name is Luis Colon. I am basically focused on what was the uh, front end of the application and the landing page. And speaking a little bit about myself, so I work as a server and a bartender in a restaurant for like a year. And I was between a gap between a, because I didn't know what I, what I wanted to study. And then, thank God, one of my family members gave me the resource of Holberton, Puerto Rico. And I was doing some a little bit of research and all that. And at the end of the day, I said, like, why not? Let's do this and let's see how it goes, because I've never had any experience in what was the technology whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave you back with Jonathan. He's going to explain about the, uh, the application. Before I get on to that, I skipped the part about myself. Sorry. Um, I used to work for, as a manager for McDonald's and Starbucks. I wanted a change of scenery. I found out about Hoberton and here I am nine months later presenting you our project. As for inspiration, like I already said, I was a manager at McDonald's and I saw that they had the system that helps them keep track of their inventory, know when they need to restock, know what product it sells the most or sells the less. And we asked ourselves, how do small businesses do that? How do they keep track of their inventory? And we went into the streets as a couple of lo uh, local business owners. And basically they told us they do it by eye. They see, um, okay, I have, X kind X quantity of this. I think it doesn't, I need to restock. And basically that's how they do it. So that's how we got inspired and we wanted to, to help them make it easier for them to manage their inventories and their sales. I'm gonna leave you with Gabriel who's gonna talk about the technologies that we use. Okay, thank you. So the technologies that we use for the project, basically for the programming language, we use Python. For the graphic user interface, in other words, the design of the application, we, we use a Python framework called Kiwi. For the database, we use MongoDB. And for the creation of a logo that you guys can see over there, we use Figma. Okay. Oh, this slide. Okay, now let's talk about SIM, right? How does it look? How does it work? So basically, SIM has three pages. You got a login page an operator page that basically is like a cashier and you got an administrator page, right? To manage in this case. In the operator page, as you guys can see here, I don't know if the back can see it, but I'm gonna try, right? My best. <laughs> basically you can um, put a product name that you wanna sell, how many of that product you wanna sell. And in this side over here, it's not shown, but in the demo, you guys are gonna see it. You're gonna see a receipt. In that receipt, you're gonna have the product that you're selling, how many right of the product you're selling, the price per product, and the total. The total basically is the sum of all the, of the prices all together. A feature 
a feature, sorry, that we have in this um, page basically is that if you try to sell a product that is low on stock, a notification is gonna pop up and it's gonna let you know, hey, this product right now is low on stock, you should restock it. If you try to sell a product that you don't have, that is not available at the moment, a null message is gonna, is gonna pop up and it's gonna say error, this product is unavailable. In the administrator page, you can manage users and you can manage the products. You can add, update, or remove either of the two options. Um, other side. In here, like I said, I don't think in the back you're gonna, you're gonna see it, but I try. Um, <laughs> In this code snippet, basically what you guys are seeing is a little bit of the code, basically the entry point to the administrator page, okay? Now, I'm gonna leave you guys with um, Luis. He's gonna talk about the challenges and the process that we have while doing SIM. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, so yeah, basically we divide our work in what was like uh, five weeks. Um, basically, the first two weeks uh, when we started the project, we were focused on what was the research because we were still deciding on what languages and what tools we were going to use. And we were also delegating each task to each member. Like uh, you, you, he said before, Jonathan is on the back end, uh, Gabriel is on the database, and I was focused on the front end of the application. On the third week, we decided to start working with the backend. Uh, so we started with Python, uh, AKA Kiwi, the framework. Uh, I started working with the landing page and the front end of the application. And we were still doing some research in the database, which by the end of it, we decided to start working with was MongoDB. On the fourth week, we started working with the database and we finished the landing page and we had a little problem debugging the database, which took us like two days. And from the, uh, the end, the final week, we were just fixing some minor bugs, adding new features and creating the presentation that you're seeing today. So I'm gonna talk about some challenges that we had of work. Uh, the first two ones are most important. So we have time management for multiple reasons. So my reason and Jonathan's reason is that we are students, uh, uh, student tutors at Holberton School. So we had to divide ourselves which, uh, on helping students on their projects and us with the final project. And Jonathan has a huge family. So he had to make the best of the time. Gabriel, Gabriel, he has a huge family. So he had to divide the work. Uh, debugging the database, as I said before, it took us like two days because uh, the reason was that I couldn't see the database in my computer, but Jonathan can see the database and Gabriel had to, uh, uh, could see it too. So we had to fix that minor problem because as I'm working with the landing page, I was trying to fix how the application uh, visualized itself. And it took us like two or three days. And connecting the pages was a huge challenge for us because since we were working with Kiwi, which is a graphic user interface, uh, when, we, when it was time to connect the pages, we had a minor problem because we had to stop at the moment and do a little bit of research to how to do it. And the final uh, bullet point is deploying it to the phone because we still hasn't, uh, haven't done yet. We deployed the application on Microsoft. Uh, but for future reasons, we're planning to deploy it on the phone. And I'm gonna leave you back with Jonathan. Thank you, Luis. Talking about technical interests, um, we chose MongoDB because in past projects at Holberton, we used MySQL and we wanted to try something different, see how they, start, how they stood against each other. Um, and since Python and Mongo work very well together, we decided to go that route. And the last two points, machine learning and front end, is Luis and I want to continue our specializations now when we end. And Luis wants to go as full stack web developer. So that's why he focused on the front end. I focus on the back end because I want to go on the machine learning route. And I know that right now it doesn't do it, but later on I can keep upgrading the app to make it analyze how the products are selling and make it a 
be a little more automated, okay? Uh, right now, I'm gonna let you with Gabriel to explain the demo. Okay, we start the video. So basically here is the landing page of SIM. You can download the, the application through Windows as Luis said. This will be the login page. Right now, the user is gonna log in as an administrator first. Here you guys can see the manage user. Here we have the users that we have at the moment. As I said before, you can add, update or remove a user. The information that we have per user would be the first name, last name, username, password, and designation. Designation meeting that you can choose if the user is gonna be an operator or administrator. In this part is the managed products. Here you can see your inventory and as well the information that we have who is the product code, product name, um, the price, how much do you have in stock and how much you have sold. Now, the user is gonna go to the operator page, the cashier. In here, you can put the product that you wanna sell, the quantity of how much you wanna sell that product. I don't know if you guys can see in the back, but a notification, a notification should pop up, letting you know that in this case, Oreos or the product that the user use is low on stock. In that side over there would be the receipt. You got the product, the quantity, the price per product, and the total. Another um, message should pop up is because right now um, Oreos is out of stock. You can you can sell it. It's unavailable. This application sim is just a way to simplify the user that is trying you know to have to sell and manage right the whole um, inventory in this case. So it's really simplified. As you guys can see, there's not much in the page. It's just simple bottom, simple input, so everybody can use it, okay? Questions? <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open a round of questions. So if you want to make any questions, also people in the back, if you want to ask any question, let raise your hand. But we're going to start with you in, in the front, okay? Any so I was curious about why you chose MongoDB, just because it, it seems very robust for the application, but you, you explained uh, what that process was. Uh, but my, my next question is, does it have reporting capability? Not yet, <laughs> but that's one of the goals for future uses. Yes, we want to import and export um, reports. And for Mongo, um, using Mongo, at least for Friday, was a lot easier to implement. La policía? Okay. <laughs> and no something I really like about Mongo is that they have um, a service called Atlas. So they do all the cloud service automatically. Or I needed to put which, choose, choose which cloud I wanted, in this case, Amazon Word Service, and that's it. So it was really simple in that case. Hi, very good, very good presentation. A good job. Um, quick question. I, I'm curious about that feature that you guys added that tells you whether you're running out of inventory or not. Because thinking about the use case of the application itself, uh, it's, it's an inventory management for a small business is it meant to be connected to the POS so that when you're to a POS so that when you try to make that sell that pop-up comes over, is it a manual input? No, it's meant to be connected to the POS because um, we the way we wanted to do is have it all in one place. Normally you have the your POS system and your inventory management system, or at least that's how right. McDonald's got it. And they somehow connected, but it was two different systems. Here we try to make it all in one place. So at the moment when I'm selling, I know if my items are going out of stock or are going low on stock. So SIM, based on that answer, SIM is eventually should become a POS system as well? Basically, yeah. Okay. 
Cool. So can you describe the requirements generation process? Because you talked about actually going out to businesses and kind of surveying them, understanding what their requirement, what their needs might be, and also from personal experience, which is great. But then how did you translate that to system and software requirements and then match your stack to support those requirements? And then how did you deal with the big family? Can you repeat the first part? The, the first part of the question, can you repeat it? Yeah, so so I, I just wanted to hear more about the, the upfront requirements generation process. And then did you get, were you guys all kind of in agreement on the initial requirements of what the app should be? Because you were mapping it to what you think from personal experience would work in the market. Uh, and then you came up with this. So what was that link? Like what, what was that talking to businesses from personal experience? documenting what you wanted the app to do, and then how did we converge on this roadmap? We can see beyond this, like this is a nice uh, like initial MVP of the product, but then you'd probably have a roadmap going beyond that. Um, so how did you think about this roadmap process? Really? Um, so basically we, at, at first when we were doing our research, we, uh, uh, from my experience, my fathers are business owners and Gabriel is from Ibonito, so he knows a lot of small businesses and Jonathan worked at McDonald's. So we were basically, I asked my parents, like, well, what would be a nice application for you to keep track of your little stuff so you don't be in the position when you're working on a, on a basic day, daily basis, and you were like uh, opening the cabin and they're like, oh, I'm out of Crayolas, which is something little small from cameras. And Gabriel perspective, which he was going through little small businesses of uh, um, panaderias, I don't know how, I forgot, bakery, sorry. And they were like, oh, I do my tracking in, uh, inventory by eye, where I write it down. And sometimes I lost the paper and I don't know where to find it. And I lost track of my inventory. So I have to redo it again. And from those experience, we were starting like, okay, uh, where are we going to focus on? So basically try to get a notification so they don't have to try to run out of, of things at the moment and they have to rush on to uh, a, bit, uh, a store and buy some things. Were there features that you thought would be awesome, but you just didn't want to do in this version? Well, the analysis part where the, the, the application itself would analyze, would tell you how a product was doing, if it was selling good or if it's, well, it was not selling. We wanted to include it, but it was just not functioning or a feature where we could have a report, a .csv file, and it could import it and read the data from there. We wanted to include it, but just didn't have the time. Thank you. Um, at the chat, uh, for our viewers that are in Zoom, somebody asked, what did you all use for the front end? So basically for the front end, we were using uh, HTML, CSS, and something uh, framework from CSS, which is called Flexbox, so the page can be more responsive. Um, and yeah, basically that flex was, was the, uh, most important part part. All right. Any, okay. We'll have a question here. Hi. Uh, so you mentioned that you want to make it as an Android app or as a mobile app. Uh, so then that means that you have an installation process for this application and do you see yourself moving it from only this installation process as a to a progressive web app so that you can see from like any browser or whatever you can see your inventory you can find your data in your inventory yeah in your inventory rather than have to go to you know your main computer to your install to your software, install to your software. install Well, um, like we said, we wanted to do it initially a phone app, a mobile app. Um, we had problems doing the deployment. It couldn't connect to the database. It would always crash. So that's why we redesigned ourselves and made it for Windows. But yeah, we plan to eventually move it to other platforms, Mac, iPhone, um, Android, web apps. We, we plan on that. I want to add something to that. Because one of the reasons that we wanted, at least how I saw it, 
um, to have it like a mobile app because my mom is a business owner as well, but she, she doesn't use a computer, like never. She's always on the phone. So I was thinking of her in this case, and maybe if she does it, then I imagine there may be a lot of users that have the same mindset. So if you had a tool like this in your phone and it's easy, so like, it's, how they say, like, it's just a great tool to use in this case, but yeah. Super. Nice work. I guess uh, my only question is in any project, do you, you ultimately encounter technical hurdles and bugs that just don't necessarily make sense at first and um, on the surface seem sort of nonsensical? And I'm wondering in building this, if you guys encountered anything in particular that at first glance just didn't make sense that wasn't working and how you approached uh, troubleshooting and, and building around that. Well, um, as of now, we currently have a bug that we don't know why. The multiplication process in the receipt that tells you keeps adding the quantity that you're selling, it will at sometimes just put a, if, if I sold two Oreos and then I resold two Oreos, it should say four. It would sometimes say 10, 40, 80. We don't know why. We still haven't figured out why. If you look at the function that we use and for us, it's working. But that's, I think that's the most crazy one that we've encountered. I don't know if any of you guys. Uh, also trying to launch the app, uh, deploy it on the phone. I think the main problem that we have that we can, uh, it, it's uh, containing us to deploy it on the phone. It's because something of MongoDB. So we're thinking about kind of doing a refactor of, or, or moving from the MongoDB database to see if we can implement it on something, another database, and to see if that can work so we can deploy it on the phone. And right now, actually, it's not in this version, but I was trying to do a sign up bottom because in this version, it doesn't have it, it's just log in. And I don't know why, but I had the same code for signing with sign up and it's not working in sign up. And it's the same thing. Like, I don't understand why, but it's something that I really want to finish and I want to see the sign up there. I don't want to see like just signing. Great. Well, thank you. It's so gratifying to see these guys coming with no experience and building this app from scratch um solutions right and that's one of the best things that we experience at the school people that do career change and they embrace this this new adventure with so much um, enthusiasm and here are the results well for the next team i i really admire his tenacity he's a student that he's been with us um since the beginning and uh, seeing him arrive to this point for me is uh, uh, it gives me great pride um he took on a very big challenge because he did this project alone so he's a one army uh, one man army <laughs> come to the stage christian he's going to present to you agenda sorry do you hear me can hear you. I'm a little bit nervous. The only stage I've been is in the shower in my house. So I will try my best. Uh, but before I start my presentation, I would like to thank Holberton and everybody who support me through this journey. I'm very grateful. I started here without any experience at all. And where I am I? I'm super grateful and I'm thankful for that. And that says a lot about the school. So before Hoberton, I used to work at NPSG. NPSG is a global company, a third higher company by Amazon. And they dedicate to build the warehouses. And thanks to God, I end up at the IT, IT support team. And that's when I got introduced into technology. And I learned by doing. My manager by then, it was also called uh, Adam. 
and he suggested me that you should go through this path. The project lasted like nine months, then the pandemic happened. Then after the pandemic, I found out about Holberton. And when I first saw the founder, his name was also Adam. It was like, damn, this is a sign of God or something. Uh, the funny part about this story is that Adam is a man of little world, words, but every time he speaks, it's like Moises opening the ocean. Like, like that. And I got very inspired by him. So my inspiration in this project, my grandfather passed away in December last year. And when I was like cleaning his room, pick up everything to put it away, I found a lot of, a lot of like agendas. Sorry, I read a lot of stuff I shouldn't read. Uh, and I found like, why like my grandfather will save a lot of agendas, agendas, and he would have like document every single aspect of his life, every note, like how much money he spent this and that. And I was, that was when my idea came like, damn, well, why should I have all of this paperwork I should have it on my phone on the computer. So that's when I proceeded to start like doing an agenda. When I proceeded with the like like learning part, like how to build it, this and that, I encountered like, damn, that's a lot of agendas, a lot of to-do lists, a lot. So I I was stuck there for for, for a week, two weeks, and I was like what can be different of my agenda from the other way that's when i found the lack of user customization so i decided to put i decided to put together an agenda that allows users not only to like change the colors how, how it looks but also change like the name instead of today can be agenda tomorrow can be like a dairy like a 30 day challenge or something like that, whatever. I wanted to be user friendly and build it however, customize it however you want. So uh, the technologies that I use, I use Firebase for deploying the app. I use uh, also uh, Google authentication with Firebase. Uh, I use Firestore for my database. And the front end, I use React.js. But React, what I find out in the documentation that with React.js, it's a single web page application. So in order for me to do a multi-web page application, I, uh, I, I added React Router. Then I also want to implement dark mode to my landing page. And that's when I found out about, about React Context and hooks and user, use effect, use state. And I use React Bootstrap just for the buttons I look like. I like how they look, and see it and SAS for for studying the page. So the flow of data of agenda is I use Firestore, and it's an, a non-SQL database. And for my front end, React.js that uses Firebase functions to update, delete, or uh, add data to the database and queries the database and receive an array of to-dos. So my process of like, how do I organize myself? I, I brainstorm all my ideas. Then those ideas, I break it down into components and follow Jira to use user stories and follow like a sprint. So I can get used to that when I'm, when I'm working with a team, I want to, I want to be like integrate to that. Like, okay, be ready when I start the work. Then I watch a lot of tutorials. I build my own routes at the, the, the two weeks ago. And then the final weeks I integrate Firebase and deploy it. So my challenges was like number one, authentication, like implement, Station like taught me to watch technical tutorials and only like grab the pieces that I want instead of 
like wasting two or three hours watching the tutorial. Okay, what's the tutorial doing? Where am I sitting down in my app? What I need from that and extract it and apply it. The second one was coding style. Uh, I learned that the cleaner the code is, the easier it is to debug and build upon it. Uh, this one would take me forever. <laughs> like it was, that's when I started learning about hooks. It's implementing dark mode. That's when uh, I encountered like everything was was working, but when I implemented the dark code, the the dark mode, not every route will apply it to it. The less route I have, the more easier it was like for implementing like all the dark mode. And that was my biggest challenge of the project. So this is like what's next for agenda. I want also to implement history, like when the user types it to do it. I wanted like to if it deletes, it saves like the date and when he when it was done. Next. And then I want to add the features, the, the setting features that it will allow you, that's where it allow the user to customize his name or, or customize the to-do list, like to naming whatever he wants, depends the mood of his, and down the recent activity. And the uh, there we'll put like the time instead of like the date. And, and it is a demo of the app. So that's the landing page. I built everything and I'm sorry, I'm new to all this. I feel very passionate about it. I will say everything. So in, in my top, I got my nav bar. There is section one, a modern way, a modern aesthetic way to organize your to-dos. There's my section two, section three, section four, and then there's my nav bar on the bottom. There's my dark mode. I hope you like the dark mode. Like it's, I almost went to Home Depot to make suggestions. Hey, how do I implement dark mode? Like, like to like the combination of colors. There's a sign in. It will pop up your information. You click, and that's my app. So write down. Oh. Okay. When you want to edit something from the from the to do, you can do it. You just click again to the edit button, then you refresh to confirm. And there it is still. When you're done with it, you just click. It will say it's done. If you if it's not done, you can unclick it. It will still work. Then that's you, the colors that I wanted to implement. It can be pink. It can be. Now in dark mode, it changes also the colors, more dark. Yep, and it deletes, it works. And I log out, and that's my demo. Questions? Super. Now we're going to go to another round of questions. Let's start with you. Great presentation. Uh, so just curious as to how this uh, compares to other current products and whether you, you uh, went through that market research, see what's out there and, and how what features would be implemented in your app. I mean, like, let's see if I understand the question. The way I, I started the research and uh, I, I found like, when I found all this app, like, oh my God, there's so many. So what will like distinguish mine for, for others? If I went, I went and used their product, each one, and of everything that I use, I found a lack of like user customization that I wanted to add. And that's why 
I build that and I just try to make it as simple as possible because something that I learned in programming and coding, that it's very easy to overdo stuff or make it more complicated than it has to be. So uh, that was my, my goal. Make it simple for the user to use that even my grandma get used. So that's that's was my inspiration. Thank you. Okay, so I love that you decided to go with an agile approach here, where you actually marked out uh, sprints and stories, which is great because you're positioning yourself for the marketplace and working with teams. But here you chose to work alone. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why did you choose to do all of this work by yourself? It's, it seems like daunting to me. I mean, the reason I I decided to work it, it, it was not a a reason. The school is is like uh online and persons but i have my responsibility in my home it's my grandfather and my grandma so there was like a the things were already made once when i oh it's only you it's like okay i accepted the challenge and here i am so congratulations <laughs> thank you uh, congratulations great story um I love the inspiration oh. Nice product. Um, and as you've mentioned a couple of times, you wanted to focus on customization, right? And we have dark mode, we have title, we have colors. I'm, I'm curious to understand what are other types of, of customization did you consider? And why did you pick this ones to be the ones that went into your MVP and your demo? The reason I choose this one is because in my user experience, I found boring that the app looks the same all the time and i want to give the user the power that today can be an agenda tomorrow can be a notebook tomorrow i mean today can be pink tomorrow it can be yellow it depends the mood now every every nobody like in these days is always in the same mood so i wanted to like try to implement all that like it can be different style style it the way you want it now follow-up question really quick so Let's say today I'm a it's a blue kind of day, right? And a bold and, and caps lock kind of day. Um, and but tomorrow it's a green, different type of day or whatnot. I imagine obviously from day to day I can change it, but then when I go back to see that, would, would it keep all those kind of customizations? That does it then roll back into a simple way that's standard? Well, how do you envision that side? Well, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I got a long way to go and I'm not going to stop here. Like, I really enjoy all of this. And I finally find a hobby that I can experience. Like, if this doesn't work, I keep, like, improving other aspects. But my main, like, goal in everything that I do in this industry is the user. Like, the user experience. Like, how do I get them back here to use my app? or my web page or the projects that I'm doing and make it simple. Let's just make it simple. Yeah, love it. Great, great attitude, man. <laughs> Thank Good you. Job. Any other question in the back? Oh, let's go. What was the most difficult part of this project and did you implement any sort of blanket search functionality? I connect with the question that you did before when, sorry for evading that question, but I really connected with you when you say like, oh, everything is working, but why this is not working? That's when I experienced the, with the uh, dark mode, I used to have like four routes and then the, the project would say everything's fine. The browser would say like react, everything is fine, but the, the, the app wouldn't look fine. Like the color was not connecting. It was half dark mode, half light mode. I was like, what? So I learned that not even following documentation in React, there's so, so some things that are gonna happen and you need like to, that, that's when you use Discord for the communication. That's why I use React because React has a great like, like support and you can ask everywhere and you will find like answers. And that's when I got stuck and said, okay, I need to do it less. And then if it works now, stay that way. I presented it that. Awesome. Thank you. 
sorry, Sophia. Okay, Sophia. What advice would you give to someone that's just starting out and doesn't have an experience? Wow, that's a great question. I will say why I would wish that I was told before I start every, all, this, all this journey. It's like number one, focus and have strong fundamentals. Don't focus on learning 10 languages, 12 languages, with, grow, with strong like fun, fundamental skills, you're gonna develop a great communication skills. When you have great communication skills, you're gonna be a better teamwork, how to communicate with others. Uh, fourth one, uh, when you are an expert on something, that's your moment to shine. Like that's your moment to give back to the community. Like, don't stay with it. Just share it back, all your knowledge. And number five, just be nice. I'm, the world needs right now, like, more nice people. And you don't know if you can make someone's day. Just be nice with him. And that's what I focus, the energy, bring the energy. No, no, Thank you, Christian. So for the newer cohorts that are here supporting their peers, hear great advice from the older ones who are graduating. <laughs> great advice, Christian. Thank you. And I'm very sure that your family is going to be very proud of your achievements and everything that you do when you work with passion and the things that you like, it shows, right? Well, now let's move to our third group. And this is going to be a very fun group because they bring us a video game. Okay, and it, the group is composed by Luis Manuel, Amisaday, and Solimar, and they're presenting us The Circle. Hello, everybody. I'm very excited to talk to you about our project that we've been working on. It has, it's a game with a simple goal, which is to democratically weed out your boring friends through a series of mini games to determine who is the most popular player. I want to talk about the team a little bit. Starting off with me, I had the role of the develop, developer lead and also the project manager of the whole thing. The project was my idea that I had. We'll talk about that in a second. And um, I started programming by myself a couple of years ago, like seven years ago, just reading a bunch of books, teaching myself languages. But I had trouble being able to land a job because it was difficult to prove that I had that experience. So that's when I came into Holberton and I was able to if they use what I've learned to get my certification and prove myself capable of doing the things that, if they, that we need to do in software development. Hello, my name is Solimar Sanchez Molina. I am the creative lead of this project. A little bit about myself. Before I came uh, to Holberton, I was a student full time for the past six years in the University of Puerto Rico of Rio Piedras campus. I used to study multidisciplinary arts and that's what I finished at. But on my third year, I came into computer science. It didn't go well in the educative system, but here I got a second chance and I've done a lot better, thank God. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Amisada Martinez Campos. I was the software developer of the group. Um, I also studied at the University of Puerto Rico in Rio Piedras. I did a bachelor's in foreign languages, specializing in Italian and Mandarin. And um, I took to programming during the pandemic. I found my way to Holberton, uh, eventually became a student tutor. And now I here I am very excited to present our final project. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, next slide, please. So now we're going to talk about the game mechanics, just because we want you guys to know how to play the game. <laughs> so it's divided in four different phases. In the first one, you get a group chat where you meet everyone. So, you know, just a little taste of who's who. Then you get a mini game, so you get to know each other better in a competitive stage. Then on the third phase, you have the private chats. 
so that you can strategize and make alliances and whatnot. And then in the voting phase, you get to vote out the least uh, popular player. And then it circles back haha, <laughs> to the first phase. Um, and you keep on going until you vote out, uh, until the most popular player wins. So yeah, you can. So the inspiration that led to Project Circle was I was eating dinner, and then my boyfriend put on the show called Circle. It's a competition reality show that has a lot of mechanics that we're implementing here. I thought it was dumb. And then five seconds later into eating, I realized I'm completely hooked on the, like, on the strategizing and all the backstabbing that's happening. But I thought auditioning would be way too much trouble. I didn't want to be in a hotel room for a whole month. So I decided instead, let's just make it into a game. And I proposed the idea to my team and they liked the idea. And so here we are. So when we were thinking about this game, these games are basically our proof of concept between Jackbox, Salem, and Among Us. Uh, Jack, personally, Jackbox, I uh, used it incredibly a lot during the pandemic. I, I, because honestly, we thought, if we're going to make a game, it should definitely be multiplayer. Because lately, a lot of people are really isolated. And they don't have many ways to communicate with their friends anymore in a more uh, interactive way. So we made it multiplayer. And we followed these uh, guidelines through, through these games, which have voting systems, uh, strategic voting systems, and any uh, kind of like uh, funny output to help out with the, with the game and the characters themselves. Uh, next slide, please. So what technologies did we use? <laughs> so for our platforms, we used Unity and Windows. For our languages, we used C Sharp. Um, for our libraries, we used Unity, and we also used uh, Photon Unity networking so that everyone could connect to, through the web. And then additional resources, uh, we used Microsoft Visual Studio Community and Sketchbook to make all of our assets. This is part of what I coded in the game. I control. I coded the uh, player controller. Next slide. So this is basically the code. Uh, it starts. It has a few methods. It's got a start method, an update method, a collision method, and, and a fixed update method. In the start method, we first have to start getting the main components to, before the game starts itself, which is uh, the rigid 2D body to transform the player movements and colliders, and the photon server itself to connect to the player. Then when we go to the update, we check if the user has a player and surrender the player controllers to them, and then set up the parameters so the player doesn't leave the screen limits. Uh, later, next step. Uh, later, we go on to the on collision enter 2D, where uh, I check if the game object collides with the coin object and play a sound. And later in the fixed update, I get the move position method for the player object in order for them to um, move at a better frame rate in this method. So now we're going to see a little bit of what I did. Uh, you can. So I worked on, one of the things I worked on was the character selection screen. Um, and basically um, I created a player object. The player object is this over here. I don't know if people can see it in the back, but basically it's like this little square that has different parts. Um, it has a background, a list of pictures, the player's name, and two buttons, one for the right and one for the left. So every time a player joins a room, one of those is going to pop up and it's going to correspond to that player. And then when you click on the arrows, you get to, you know, change characters. But how does that work? So <laughs> the list of pictures is basically the avatars list. And the list has different numbers, which is uh, the elements of the list. And each number has a value attached to it the value being the picture. So when you move your index through the list, you can change the picture. So once the player clicks right, what is actually happening is I'm changing the, the position of the picture so that you can keep on looking at the other ones. Then this method here just makes it so that people uh, across the network can see you changing your character uh, in real time. And then in the last one, you just set that picture to that player. Uh, 
Why? Because players have attributes. They have uh, corresponding names and character images so that we can access this information later on as the game goes by. And we need to make it so that, you know, your character image number corresponds to your player. And that's it. That's my code. <laughs> The part that I think was like one of the more challenging parts was designing the voting system. If you could go to the next slide. So you're not gonna be able to read this. I have a flow chart that's gonna explain it better, but just looking at it here, there's two classes. One of them is the elimination manager and the other one is the voting manager. If you go to the next slide, please. So in the voting manager, if the, once the user clicks on one of the icons that we created, it's going to add one to a custom property that we added to the player, if the, class that photon network provides for us and we created that if the, that keeps track of how many votes each player had once everybody votes every time an uh, icon is clicked it's going to check if everybody has finished voting if they have then we go over to the elimination manager the elimination manager is going to determine is going to find the loser and it's going to set to it's going to change the scene according to the player if they're a loser or not if they're not a loser then they get sent to the wait box, which is, is a, t it's a blue box that says waiting for other player, for the loser to send their message because they get to have a parting word. And then the eliminated player gets sent to the say goodbye box. The say goodbye box just has a text box and a send button. Once they send it, we take if the pro player properties for the profile picture, for the character name, and, for, and the elimination message that they just made, and we store it in a photon network if the custom property for the room, because once we kick out the player, we're not going to be able to access the information from the player in a regular way. So we made that to get around that. And then we have the ejects player function, and that sends the loser to the load to the start menu and sends the safe players to the parting words where they get to see the eliminated the, the message from the eliminated player. So a little bit about the timeline that we had. At the, in 23rd of April, we had our first group meeting where I talked about if the, the idea that I was having for the game and the game mechanics. After that, we, if the, when everybody agreed to the idea of the project, I started setting up the GitHub repository because there was a lot of safe okay, things that I had to add to make it so that we could work together on a Unity project because the way that Unity handles files can be very complicated when working in a Git repository. So I wanted to add automation that would automatically build the project every time something gets pilled, if they pushed to the main branch. That way we could make sure that everything was working right. If the, after we had that, after I set up all the repository, we installed Unity Hub on everybody else's computers and cloned the repository. So in June is when the bulk of the project happened because that's when <laughs> whole written loosened its grip on us and we didn't have so much work <laughs> we could focus on the project um, so the first two weeks were very important in the first one we completed our minimum viable product uh, design and we created mock-up assets of what we wanted our game to look like and then in the second week um, we designed the order of the scripts, which is super important in Unity, because if you have to rename something, you best just erase it and start over. And um, we also implemented and deployed the lobby scene, which was the first scene ever, uh, so we could keep on working with the project, right? And in the last two weeks, we dealt with the mini games, the voting system, uh, the end screens, and completed the MVP along with uh, creating a landing page, adding the music and all the assets onto the mockups. So some of, we had a few challenges when we were designing this. One of them was that I was hoping that we could make this a WebGL build, which meant that you wouldn't have to download the game when you played it. However, when we started designing the, we started coding and then we started testing it with the WebGL build, we discovered that WebGLs have a limitation with the way that they handle multi-threading that wasn't compatible with the way that we were coding the online. We would have had to redesign a lot of the code and we didn't have the time. So we decided that instead we just shift over and make it into a Windows build for the presentation. And that was how we got over that if the hurdle. And we didn't have to change anything. So another challenge we had was that everything was new 
for Solimar and I. <laughs> Luis Manuel already had experience with C Sharp, but for us, this was all brand new. So we really had to, um, we were nervous, excited about it, and but, but we managed. <laughs> Uh, another challenge which un unfortunately affected me the most, uh, I live in an area where the power outages are very common and often. I spent a good three days without much power. Uh, and the thing is that even though I could have gone to the school in order to continue my work, gas prices are just ridiculously high. And I really had to stay home to do as much as I could. This game in the mini game section could have been a lot more if it hadn't for been for that, just saying. I'm still pretty happy with what we have. Yes, me too. <laughs> The, the other thing was the thing I mentioned before, Git conflicts. The way that Unity handles files does a lot of things secretly in the back that, to, that, let us, that let, lets Unity know how the files interact with each other. And a lot of that information is something that takes a lot of space. So we had to use Git LFS to get around it because if the Git wasn't designed around large files, so we have Git LFS, which is specifically designed for large files, that lets us store a reference to the files in the repository instead of the file itself. <laughs> now we get our live demo. If they, we have a video and we also have um, a QR code that's gonna let you go to our project landing page, but let's start with the video. You may not see it, but hopefully after that, you can just go to the landing page and get a look at it. But So here we have four players. One of them is logging in, just so you could see. See. If they, we do have music. I don't know if you can hear it, but if they, the players are logging, if they are joining the room that the lobby that was created for the lobby, and they're selecting their characters by clicking on the arrows. And then the last one is starting from the beginning, just so you can see the start menu that we had. We have transitions between scenes as well. Now we're going to be starting the game. Once the game started, we get sent to the group chat. As you see, every I the icons on the right correspond to the character that was chosen. And on the left, we have a box that has all the messages as they get sent. And uh, once the timer for the group chat runs out, we get transitioned to the first mini game that we have, which is just a simple coin collecting mini game. You have to collect the most coins. We will be making this experience a lot more interesting when we have the time to actually expand on it. <laughs> but for now, it's just a proof of concept of the mini games. Finally, we have the private chat. You can see the icons of everybody else's, and then you can select the person you want to talk to. When you open the chat, it alerts the player that they opened your chat, and then you can send messages to each other and strategize. Finally, the voting, if it says vote out the boring, so you gotta vote out the boring player. Once they're, if they're, the vote happens, the voting player gets sent to the loser box where they send their goodbye message. And then finally, you see the goodbye message scene. This will then loop back around to the start menu. You'll see it here. But the, to the group chat until eventually all the players are eliminated. Uh, this is the QR code for the desktop landing page, which I created. You can download the game in the first page and you can also uh, know, uh, have an about us and contact us. We left our, our stuff there. And uh, also the same video that you just saw is in the game in, in, in the website. So you'll be able to observe that. If you can watch the video, you can see the funny text messages I sent that you can't appreciate here. So, so what did we learn throughout this project? You can change the slide. So in my case, um, <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> in my case, um, there are so many tools out there. Holberton um, gets you used to having to do everything by yourself and everything from scratch. 
And when we started working with um, the IDE Unity, I was like, what? No way. <laughs> There's so many resources out there. There's so much I can do and I, without having to reinvent the wheel. And especially what I liked the most was C-sharp. I really, um, I was nervous. I was really nervous because uh, I didn't know anything about C-sharp and everything was going to be coded in that. But I gained the skill of getting to learn fast in Holberton. And I was able to learn it very well and, and get to work on this project. So that's what I learned. I really liked it. Also, shout out to Lucia, uh, the ones that know, no. <laughs> She's my favorite character in the game. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I learned that I really enjoy working on both the initial setup and the back end for the project for programming and also connecting it to the front end. So I definitely will be doing full stack development. I also learned that I really enjoyed doing like having a leadership position where I could like organize how the project is going to be and setting everything up. Um, and also, surprisingly, I used to be terrified of Git and I feel like I became a god at it now. So I'm really happy about that. <laughs> And I was able to make everything flow seamlessly, which was very rewarding. Uh, next. So in my case, this project was very rewarding for me because I actually plan to specialize in augmented and virtual reality using the Unity engine. So this was a good head start for me to start uh, before anything. And I really thank my team for allowing me to have this pro like this opportunity. And L Lewis is a tremendous leader. If you need, if you need a leader, this is it. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so if the, what's next? If the, we have some assets that we want to like. You can scan the QR code and get the landing page in order to get the game. It's not available for mobile, so you're going to have to use a computer for now. Uh, no, uh, no it is? sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually the QR code for the, for the mock-ups that we have of how we want the game to actually look. If you go to the next slide, you'll get an idea. If the, we want to have character bios and have this design for it. Go to the next slide. And we also want to implement more features to the group chat. Just make it more uh, pretty as well. So yeah. yeah. The thing that we, the QR code led you to an interactive mockup, which is really cool. If they go to the next slide. We also want to have more mini games. Mini games that actually come on game. <laughs> if they invite, if the player interaction. So just go through the slides like a little bit. If the, you get to make a funny joke and then people get to vote on which is the funniest joke and um, then a winner is given and then that way you can build your popularity a little bit through the, you can probably throw some shade too to the other players and get them to get voted out. There, there's also a, a, a food fight mini game that was in development, but because of time it had to be cut because it wasn't completed. So oh, special thanks to both Edwin Diaz Negron and Christopher Viera Sanchez uh, Edwin was the music composer and producer. Uh, you couldn't hear it, guys, but every scene had a song, and it was a wonderful song. Um, and he did all of that work. And Christopher Elviera Sanchez, he created the mock-up for the user interface for Project Circle. So he helped us with what we want, the vision that we really wanted at the, uh, for, for the game. So yeah, thank you for thank your you so time. Much. Any questions, guys? <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> All right, so questions, who wants to start? Here, it made the back. Okay, I have a question in the back and then I'm gonna to move to the, to the front. Hello, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I was wondering, uh, what made you guys choose Unity specifically as opposed to like something like Unreal Engine? So we actually did have the discussion. We wanted to, we were discussing between Unreal Engine. We also looked into Gato. We did not go with Unreal Engine because it's kind of overkill for a game that's mostly just menus. If they, we wouldn't really be taking advantage of any of the, if the physics that they have or any of the, if the, the rendering power that they have. So we decided to go with Unity also because it's a lot easier to code in Unity, in my opinion. I always had a lot of trouble messing around with Unreal. And we tried, we were considering Gato. I think that's how you could say it. Good though? That. <laughs> it's, um, it's a fairly newer engine and we didn't really want to risk messing around with something that wasn't tried and, uh, and proven. So we decided Unity. 
Awesome. Excellent work, guys. Thank you. If I can add to that, we also wanted um, in Unity, we also had the advantage that they have a large community. So if anything happened that we were stuck, we could reach out and get some help. So, yeah. So you, you mentioned uh, doing Git integration. I was wondering if you did any test integration where it automatically ran tests and and if you tested the case where, what if the votes are all equal? No, yes, I did. And I cheated. What I did was, <laughs> since I didn't have time to implement the mechanics that we had in mind, like we had a mind of a rock, paper, scissors kind of deal for a tie. But so what we ended up doing was it'll go by player port. So it'll go check every player. And if you're just happen to be like third in the player port and you have a tie with somebody, you're gone. <laughs> Okay, thanks. What was the first part of your question? Something about again. Oh yeah, so automated, the automated testing. The only thing that we got a chance to really do was at the, the building, the automatic building of the project. We wanted to do at the automated tests, and but we didn't have time, and we made the mistake that everybody makes, which is we think it's gonna actually waste time to unit test, but it didn't, because every time we had to test it, it was the big pain having to build four inter instances just to get through the whole thing. So lessons learned. Uh, really not really a question about your general project, more about the game. What's the player cap? And do you plan on expanding that to a limit that you have in mind? And did you choose this player cap because you were limited by time or was it more like this is the play style that we want? So we were definitely limited by time because I was responsible for creating all of all, if not most of the assets, uh, all the characters that you see, it, the three characters are mine. Two are Amisalais, the leg yeah, lamp, the leg <laughs> lamp included, yes. And one of them is uh, uh, Lewis is a, a Jack, uh, the Joker character. Uh, while I was building these assets, I also had to build the icons and other things. And I also had to build the sprites uh, and uh, and the background chat simultaneously working on the mini game and then the other stuff happened and it was supposed to be 10 players 10 players but for now six also if the we i've been thinking about that and i've realized that our game almost has a bit of a battle royale benefit so we were thinking of upping it to 15 players if the 10 to 15 players in per lobby this is also a game that probably would work better with random players because of the way that it's designed of like having to get to know people Wanted to know a little bit about the research that you guys did behind it because I thought it was interesting how you guys thought about the specific faces, and especially if they're one about that private chat. Which I can imagine it's it's a chance for the least popular person to try to save their asses or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's how how do you how how do you think about those faces and what prompts you, for example, to put that private chat before you get to uh, suck somebody out? So. It was basically very based on the on the reality TV show, because it's a reality TV, it's it's a reality competition TV show series, all of that put into one, and they already have it like down to a science on how it goes. So basically, we just uh, made it made the made their process smaller into uh, fewer faces, and we ran with it. So. That, that's it. <laughs> we did also, um, <clears throat> as we were testing it, because we didn't have all the features that we would like to have, we figured that having the private chat after the mini game would be a better idea. That way, since we couldn't have the original mechanic that we had in mind for how to get people to know, we had a speed dating mechanic going on. If they, we decided, okay, then let's do the group chat, mini game, and then private chat. And, but yeah, like she said, we did base a lot of the ideas are based on the show. Congratulations, uh, great and engaging. And you guys chose to do a lot. So just impressed with how you guys uh, were able to execute. Uh, what happens with the, the, the player that gets uh, voted off? Currently, they get sent to the start menu. Ideally though, we would have, we're trying to think of ways that we can make it so that people don't just leave when they lose. I'm thinking of having a way for them to like, vote on who they want to win as they're gone or something per round and then maybe have it so like that vote influences a tiebreaker or something like that 
the other. Yeah, <laughs> we also kind of wanted to leave them just as a little resentful ghost and uh, occasionally giving them the chance to chat with uh, to have a private chat with a player like the private chat round pops up and then the resentful ghost just selects someone and that person's like oh my god and then he can like lie and say things or whatever and expose the truth who knows yeah all right so you guys obviously did a great job executing i want to hear more about this great like team dynamic and leadership that was going on i heard you're a great team lead by the way <laughs> so so how'd you guys do it he, he really is like the man the man set things up and thought of everything from the first day the, there were so many things that i was like i don't know how to well how are we gonna do this and then no we're gonna do this 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 and i'm like and that's it and that's it so uh, th like seriously this guy really managed everything great uh, in the beginning and up to the end and we worked together till it was done. Um, also, I would like to say my team was really good at working and learning everything. And also, we all had like our unique strengths. So it was very interesting as we worked together to realize what our strengths was. And so I was able to figure out what tasks would be better delegated and what tasks are better for me. If the juggling that at first was like very difficult, but uh, if the, eventually we started getting to know each other better in that regard. And um, just a lot of planning. We had the Trello board. I had it originally in, in Notion, but then we used Trello, which was really good. And we had like the approved and deployed and everything like the whole team kind of helped us with that. So we just proposed all the ideas and then moved everything to approved. And then we kind of had like an idea of what was we prioritized in order of what needs to be in the game for there to be something. And then, yeah. And uh, complementing that, like uh, the way that he organized everything, uh, he also asked of us to do things that were uh, within reason, you know, like we like he didn't start jamming a bunch of things to like burn us out. None of that. He really managed well what we each were supposed to do. And he never asked for more. He just uh, asked for enough. We actually had to go like, hey, <laughs> can I do more? <laughs> like, <laughs> let's go, let's do this. Um, but also, uh, at least Luis and I, on a personal level, we've been friends since like seventh grade. Uh, he's the reason I'm here. I'm really thankful for that. And um, so we already knew we were going to work together on our final project. And it was seamless. And then Solimar was like, hey, guys, I know you guys are a team. Can I join? And we're like, yeah, come on, because we're all so close. Uh, we're like two two out of three girls in the in our cohort, Sophia, where she mwah. and uh, so we're already close. And when she got there, it, it, it was like we were talking about it. Luisa and I were like, she was heaven sent. We didn't know we needed her until she showed up. This has been amazing. So it was really a great uh, experience, a, a great teamwork experience. No dramas, no conflicts. That's awesome. Thank you. And last comment is if you are interested in gaming professionally, there is this like blockchain based play to earn kind of gaming phenomenon going on right now, kind of a, a big booming market. So. Oh, wow. okay. That's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> There's one question from the uh, Zoom audience. Which tools did you use for continuous integration? We use something called Game CI. If they, I was looking around for how I could implement continuous integration, and that seems to be the number one solution. I had a heck of a time figuring out how to set it up, but eventually I actually ended up joining their Discord, and the people there were very helpful. So if you do need something for in continuous integration for Unity, GameCI has a really active community, and also it's, it's just really good and really user-friendly. Once you get past the first blocker of <laughs> figuring out how to use it. Well, thank you. Let's give them a round of applause, please. Teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. One of our biggest values. And when the teamwork is integrated and the synergy shows in the product, in the final product, right?